Alicia here, and I thought today we could switch gears a little bit and talk about books. I've talked about books a decent amount of times on this channel, but it's the new year, so I feel like it's a good time to readdress the subject of books and reading a lot of them. I received a comment in the comments about this, so that kind of just triggered this whole video idea, so thank you. I love reading your comments, and I like taking your guys' suggestions. So. I want to address the idea of how to read a lot of books and I've got eight specific ways that I'm going to bring up to you in this video. As a little bit of a backstory, I have been challenging myself to read 52 books per year for the last six years. So I think um, 2015, in that, yeah, 2015 was my first year. Now I did read before this, but that's when I started going on Goodreads and specifically setting yearly reading challenges of 52 books. Now. Out of those six years, I have surpassed 52 four times. And out of those six years, I have not hit my 52 book a year goal. Um, I think falling around like 45 books instead of 52. Oh no, 45 books, what a terrible tragedy. Still great. So that means that in the last six years, I've read something like 250 books. It's a mix. So when I look at the content, it's some some part fiction, just kind of like junky throwaway books or like more sophisticated fiction like literature. There's a lot of personal development style books, um, whether it be about business or music or a little bit more of like a spirituality bent. And that, uh, then like a decent amount of parenting books because in this time I had a child. So that's essentially the mix. Now, um, we could talk about why reading a lot is a great habit, but that's not the subject of today's video. Today's video is more on the how. How do you read 52 books in a year? It seems like a pretty unreasonable amount when you're thinking like, okay, a book a week, that seems like a lot to most people. But if you think that, and this is going to be one of my first points here. If you think that the average book is roughly four to seven hours in length in terms of how long it takes either to listen to as an audiobook or to um, read. So like the average 250 page book is gonna take you four to seven hours to read or listen to. Then four to seven hours, all you really have to think about, okay, a book a week, that's roughly an hour of reading a day. An hour of reading a day is completely reasonable and doable, um, even if you don't have a reading habit at the moment. So my first suggestion would be to just get in the habit of reading. It's one thing to, like it's fun and exciting to set a reading goal, like I'm gonna read 52 books this year. But what that really comes down to is a habit. It comes down to making room for an hour a day of reading. And uh, sometimes you'll get really into it and you'll wanna read more. Now I'm not very consistent with this. I'll go through phases where I read a lot. I go through phases where I read very little, but it averages out to about, 52 books a year. So the second suggestion that I would give you is to not start by like diving. You might have this idea that you want to read like the, the shining stars of literature, like you want to read War and Peace and stuff like that. But unless you're really comfortable with turn of the century Russian literature, that might not be the best idea because you're making your job hard right on the outset. So you're reading a complicated book that takes a little bit of work to get into and to understand all the different characters and stuff like that. Um, and you're also starting a new habits um, and it, it's not really, it's a way to kind of <laughs> make it seem overly difficult. So the best way to start is to just read whatever you're interested in. Read that um, chiclet fiction or what it, you don't have to focus on reading high quality books to start. I mean, you can read what you're interested in if you really like, um, yeah, if you really like fantasy series or whatever, that's reading that counts. So pick what you like and pick what's easy for you to read and get into because the whole idea is to build in yourself a love of reading. Once you are in the habit of reading, once you enjoy the habit of reading and you are, are excited about the things that you're reading, from there, it's much easier to move into something like War and Peace because you always already have a well-established habit and a love that you've created. So take the time to create that love, otherwise it's gonna be a grind. So number three, is to this is a this is a surprisingly difficult one but replace a bad habit with reading so i've done this is basically how i've made reading work in my life if i spend a lot of time on the internet just like interneting like randomly you know going on reddit or facebook or whatever um it, that eats up so much random time and it's such a waste of time overall so even by getting rid of like half an hour of random interneting it 
opens up the door to doing a lot more reading. Or if you tend to watch, say, two hours of Netflix every night, then, or any of the various streaming services, I like all of them, um, then maybe you could cut it back to one hour instead of two hours, and then you have an extra hour for reading. So reducing the time sucks, because most people, I shouldn't say this, a lot of people have enough time for reading. So when I hear things like, oh, I don't have time to read that much, it's like, okay, but do you actually not have time? Or are you just prioritizing your time in different ways? So are you putting a higher priority on doing other activities like going on social media and watching TV? That would be the thing that I find the easiest way to just kind of replace the time I'm already spending from a less productive activity to a more productive activity. Um, four is to read at meals. So this is another way that I like to fit it in um, at various points. It depends if I'm eating a lot of meals by myself or with other people. So if I'm eating a meal with other people, I'm not reading. Um, but oftentimes I'll have breakfast or lunch by myself, in which case I'll usually sneak in like 20 minutes of reading while I do that. So I like reading a meal. Um, I, think, I think it's a nice way to pass the time. I like it better than just random inter interneting, which is pretty much the only other thing I'm doing at meals. So number five is to follow your inspiration of the moment. So what I would do in the past is I would make lists of books that I wanted to read for the year. I get really excited about my upcoming year of books and I'd plan because I love planning too. So I'd plan all the books that I wanted to read. But the problem with this is that that's what I want to read in the moment. But maybe two months from now, I'm going to have all these other ideas of different books that I want to read. And my existing list is stale and loses its life and energy. I always find reading the most pleasurable when I just get interested in one particular topic. So it could be if I get interested in a series. I remember a couple of years ago, I read the, the Red Queen series and, um, yeah, I just like blasted through all four of them because I got really absorbed in it starting from the first and then I had to just read the rest. Or like right now, I'm reading about childhood education and I just had a random whim the other day. I was reading some blogs. I was reading about child education. I was like, ooh, this looks like an interesting book. This looks like an interesting book. And I was like, oh, why don't I read these books? And I jump on that train. I jump on the inspiration. And then I fly through those books because I'm super interested in it in the moment. So. It's less about, like, I like having a book list of ideas of things that I want to read in the future. And that list is always growing for me. But I also pay attention to, okay, what, what's my spirit tugging to me, tugging me towards in the moment? Because that's often going to be where you're the most curious, you're going to absorb what you learn the most, and you're going to have the most energy and enthusiasm for reading. So number six is to track your progress. So this is a simple accountability thing. I like to post the books that I've read on Goodreads and I like to set my reading goal every year on Goodreads. And I've been doing this, um, I've been using Goodreads, I think since its inception pretty much in, in 2009. And um, yeah, I like, I like, uh, I have people follow me on Goodreads and stuff like that. So I just like that as a simple tool to keep track for my own sake. Even if no one else saw my Goodreads, I get to see what books that I want to read and what books I already have read. So it's like a master list of everything, keeps track of it for me, that's really useful. And I just find it fun to mark a new book as read every time I read a book. So number seven, it's to remember that, if, especially if you're reading fiction, the first eighth or to a quarter of a book is probably gonna be a little bit challenging. It doesn't matter if you're reading like Hemingway or Tolstoy or whatever, it's, it's the first chunk of fiction where the author has to teach you the characters, has to teach you their style, has to teach you the setting and the set and all of that stuff. So there's a lot of um, upfront effort when it comes to reading fiction that happens at the early beginning portion of a fiction book. And it's important not to overlook this because I think most of us who have read fiction have the experience of a little bit of inertia in the first eighth to quarter of the book where the pages go slower, like you're not reading it very fast because there's so much to digest and absorb and you're just learning so much. But once you're about a quarter of the way in to half of the way in, it starts going way faster. The reading gets a lot smoother, a lot easier because you already know everyone, you already have a sense of the author's style. And then towards the end, you're usually reading it quite fast. So if you have a 300 page fiction book, it's that first quarter that's gonna take the longest to read compared to the rest of it. So just remember that when you're opening a book, when you're starting it, that if it feels a little bit like a slog or a little bit like work, it's not just pure pleasure, like pure passive pleasure. Um, 
it, it is just because of that. It's it's not because you're bad at reading or anything. Get to the end of the book and see what happens. Okay, number eight, and this is the final one that I like to do, is I like to give myself essentially an unlimited book budget, which isn't as wild as it sounds. It's not like I'm spending crazy amounts of money on books. But I have a Scribd subscri uh, subscription, so S-C-R-I-B-D dot com. Um, Scribd has, um, basically it's like a book, like a book subscription. It's like book Netflix, pretty much. So um, I like using that. I've been using that for a couple of years. They don't have every book, but they have a decent amount of books. So probably like a quarter of the books that I read are on script, whether in audiobook format or in ebook format. Um, I also have an Audible subscription, which I've been paying for for quite a long time. And aside from that, I buy books for my Kindle sometimes, or I buy hard copies of books. And almost never, I go through phases with this, but especially during COVID, I don't use the library. But um, in the past, I kind of have like mixed feelings. I do like using the library. So it's a great option if you just don't have the extra money to spend. I probably spend somewhere between $50, $50 to $100 a month on books at absolute most. I just think about like all the stupid things I spend money on, right? So if I'm spending $50 to $100 on books, I could spend that on a meal, like a single meal. It's there, it's gone, it's done because I was too lazy to cook something. So. It's like, okay, if I'm willing to spend that much money on a meal, why am I also like, why am I like, oh, I don't think I can afford this $20 book. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I'd rather um, not buy that meal than not have books. I think books are such a great thing for your mind. So anyway, that's why it's important to me to prioritize a budget for it. But the reason I'm a little bit like mixed feelings about the library, because I've gone through phases with it, is because one of the points I said is, I really love following the inspiration of the moment. So if I'm really into reading about childhood education, for example, then if I go to the library and I order them, like I get them to order in some books, a couple of those books might come quickly, but some of those books might not be able to like make it to me for two months or three months. And by then it's the phase is over. I'm no longer interested. I don't have the same zest or enthusiasm for the subject that I did in the exact moment. So using the library isn't, that great if you like reading on kind of like a moment by moment basis where the things that you get curious about and excited by are a little bit unpredictable so it can be good for some things um but availability is the biggest issue that i found um just when things are on hold and you're waiting for other people to finish the book that you want to read so those are my eight tips for becoming a um a well-read person so just reading more books i want to finish by saying that not much of this I think has anything to do with reading speed. I don't think I'm a particularly fast reader. I'm not a slow reader. I have practice reading, but I don't think I'm super fast. Uh, it really depends what I'm reading. It's more, it's less about the speed. I think and more about the habit. So if you're a slow reader, okay, maybe it'll take you seven hours to finish a book that someone else might take four hours to finish. But if you're in the habit of reading regularly, then you'll still like just that hour a day is going to be what makes the difference. And that hour a day is going to be maybe what makes you a little bit faster, but I don't think speed is all that important, especially if it's, if it impairs digestion of the material. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this discussion up and I'll catch you guys later.